video was sponsored by Mantisly. I watched all 36 episodes of Cuphead to rank them from worst to best, and we definitely have a crappy episode to start with on our hands. Lost in the Woods is the worst episode of Cuphead. Point blank. The episode revolves around Cuphead being tasked to gather firewood after he destroyed some, but Mugman helping him out due to his impulsive yet empty headed nature. The appeal of Cuphead as a character is that even though he's impulsive, selfish, egotistical, and dim witted, it is balanced out with a sense of charisma, bravery, and love for his family, even if it isn't always shown. All of that was thrown out of the window and ran over by a high speed train. <laughs> Stupid rockets. Cuphead didn't respect Elder Kettle or Mugman as they did the simple job of collecting firewood. Mugman in particular was cutting the firewood that he wasn't even scolded to get. He was doing Cuphead's punishment for him and Cuphead still went out of his way to make it a nightmare. I get what this episode was going for, having the back and forth between being responsible and not, but the comedy isn't there at all, not even a little bit. It's not even in the same solar system as most of these episodes. It comes off as Cuphead being the worst person never, which is not how he is in other episodes, he's never been this brain dead before, and wasn't this brain dead after this episode. But the part I disliked the most in this episode is that Mugman had to apologize. It didn't matter what he had to apologize for. No matter what moral gymnastics you play, Mugman has absolutely nothing to apologize for in this episode. If the series was 20 of these, I would have never touched this show with a 10 foot pole. Oh. Yeah, there's a number on the screen. Yeah, each episode is rated out of five based on four factors primarily that I think make up the ideal Cuphead episode. Comedy, because it is a comedy heavy show, a sense of adventure and how entertained I was throughout it, the story, which is different from adventure, and the last element, which is the most important as it'll vary throughout each episode, the gamey feel of the show. This is a video game adaptation, so it should retain what people enjoy about the game translated into an animated series. Now, if that's a confusing concept the picture, just replace the word game feel with lore, as I'm using them interchangeably. Speaking of pictures, we have another episode that tarnishes the image of season 2. Say Cheese has very little to offer. The episode is about Elder Kettle wanting a family portrait with Cuphead and Mugman, and despite begging, offering, and demanding, they still don't do it, yet blackmail Elder Kettle into giving them what they want, despite not following through on their end of the offer. It's even worse when you realize that the justification for treating Elder Kettle like crap is that Cuphead mentions offhand that Elder Kettle doesn't come through on his promises. You're always promising to take us places, then when it's time to go, you say you can't remember. I don't remember that. Yet not only is that not the case in general within the show, he specifically brings up the promise that he made to Cuphead and Mugman in this episode and how they didn't come through on their end of the deal regardless. So now we don't even know if Elder Kettle was telling the truth or not. Either way, he's been treating Cuphead and Mugman just fine throughout the seasons, and it's actually their annoying and aggressive attitudes that drive him up the wall. It's disheartening to see Mugman acting this way specifically because he's generally seen as the more sensible one of the duo, but for some reason, Reason, it is written completely differently here, as if he isn't able to deduce that if he gives Elder Kettle a simple photo that'll take like 5 seconds, he can get what he wants. Not only this, but the ending was all over the place. Why did Elder Kettle want to physically harm his children? The camera was already broken. Not only this, but couldn't he have simply just grounded them for life if the photo was ever released? This episode is all over the place, masquerading as a funny episode, when in reality it's just a mean-spirited mess. In fact, one can say that this episode was so boring that even during a rewatch, I nearly fell asleep, which has been easier to do with my Manta sleep mask. I want to mention something super important. Look at the time of this video. Do you see how we're barely getting started in this long video? Yeah, I started this video eight days before the publish date. The only way for me to binge the show, take notes, script, revise, record, edit, and polish this video while also doing daily community posts and being active on Twitter and Discord is keeping my energy right, which starts with a good night's rest. One way I recommend improving your sleep is with Manta's OG Sleep Mask, which gives me a better balanced sleep with no pressure on my eyes at all. The Manta Sleep Mask is incredibly affordable and comes along with earplugs and a case. So basically, if this video is anything, it's a test 
testament to how well I've slept while getting such a big video done in a short amount of time. So thank you Mantisleep for sponsoring this video, and if you want a 10% discount on a good night's rest, use promo code AlphaJ at checkout, A-L-P-H-A-J-A-Y, when you get your very own Manta Sleep Mask, the world's comfiest 100% blackout sleep mask guaranteed. Speaking of spirits, in the spirit of numbered reviews, I want to say really quick that I'm only comparing these episodes to each other, not any other show. Usually reviews of numbers get a certain subsection of the internet crying about the numbers and the rankings. And speaking of babies, we have the third worst episode of the show. Despite such a low score, I actually warmed up to Baby Bottle compared to how I felt when the season was brand new, so consider this score an improvement. It was a typical misunderstanding plot, specifically the demon child baby plot where the baby looks cute and innocent to one person or multiple people, but demonic to one specific person. This episode kind of avoided the truly angering scene of, for example, Mugman seeing the baby do something bad but blame Cuphead for it regardless, even in cases where one couldn't justify how this was Cuphead's fault. And I think that's the saving grace. This isn't like everyone hates Bendy, for example, where in certain instances they just blame Blue because of his poor credibility rather than looking at logic. Baby Bottle is still not a great episode, and debatably, I'd even argue it's not a good episode either. It has some decent moments and admittedly it avoided some bad choices that other episodes that use this plot typically run into. But getting around that, Baby Bottle is the first episode to establish that Cuphead is a mean show or at least meaner compared to his contemporaries. And we notice given that Cuphead didn't warrant any of the pain that was given to him via the baby and also that Elder Kettle didn't warrant any of the pain that he ran into with the baby. But also how they solved the problem. Take care of baby. Oh. Let's get you inside. It's not a show meant to be held up to a moral standard akin to shows like Craig of the Creek, The Loud House, or even wacky shows like Phineas and Ferb. It's meant to have a little gray area morality to achieve the comedy that it wants. It's just that here, like building up Elder Kettle's radio as a prized possession just to have the baby intentionally break it, it's just not that funny, nor was the story tailored towards the show in a gamey sort of way compared to the first episode of the show. But there's another episode that struggled with its comedy a lot, despite avoiding mistakes that would ruin episodes like these, and that's Joyride. While I understood that this episode is only here to introduce Miss Chalice to the devil, if you take this episode out and simply add the last 30 seconds of this episode to the next, you don't lose anything. It's not so much that this episode does anything wrong or truly egregious, it's that this episode doesn't do anything at all. It's just them meandering for 15 minutes. The hook that this episode attempts to offer is Miss Chalice's ability to possess bodies. However, we would have known about about this within the beginning of Dead Broke. As within that episode, Cuphead and Mugman were possessed by Miss Chalice, and by the way, Dead Broke comes before this episode. Sure, seeing Elder Kettle be less responsible and more like Cuphead was an interesting thought, but not enough to warrant a whole episode or a whole half of this episode to focus on. Not only that, but there's no gamey feel to this episode at all. It honestly feels like a filler episode and an otherwise strapped for time show. It doesn't have time to waste. <laughs> You guys wanna get some cotton candy? Boy, do we! Come on! <laughs> you two go on ahead. I'll be right there. However, I won't dock points at least from the adventure aspect because it did have a good pace even if it wasn't going anywhere significant until the end. There's a few ways I would have fixed this if the staff was married to this concept. Why not have Chalice introduce a weakness of sort from possessing too many bodies? Why not have them do the joyride aspects but break the car and have to fix it in time? Why not have the devil do reconnaissance spying on Chalice the entire time before making the call to summon her? There's no conflict in this episode so it always came across as a flubbed execution to me. Speaking Speaking of flubbed executions, let's talk about one that I covered before. A Very Devil Christmas is a very, very, very flawed attempt at making a Christmas episode. It follows in the season 3 trend of making the devil just feel sad and bad for himself for the most part in the show. Except here, combining the introduction of Santa Claus and one of the most ridiculous ways to motivate someone to be good. Mind you, the devil has been on the naughty list for so long that he's at the top of that list. Yet Santa fused himself with the devil and made a pact that if the devil doesn't deliver presents to everyone, Christmas is cancelled. He's putting his faith in everyone getting presents all around the world on the person who's at the top of the naughty list, the most naughty person. If you do not succeed, you'll stay Santa Claus for all eternity. Oh, okay. Oh, 
Oh, you crazy. Like I said in my video, Santa is insane. However, an insane premise alone doesn't make this episode flawed. The adventure was dry and I often found myself bored, even through a rewatch of it. There's sprinkles of hope here and there like the joke of the devil failing to be nice even for 5 seconds, or him singing in the beginning of the special, or even henchmen in general, especially the wholesome ending. But what's in between those good moments is a bunch of filler that was forgettable, but also another brick and a wall of shame having the devil turn into a wooby. I also guarantee you that the ice cream man sounds better as a title and concept than watching the actual episode. So Dangerous Mugman is a season 1 episode that has Mugman at the forefront without being boring, yet here it feels like the problem of splitting up the two is that if you're trying to do a story like this, they kind of need each other. The story was bare bones and the show doesn't really work well with having a freeform type of story. The relatively exciting part of this episode is short and underwhelming with Mugman and the Ice Cream Man battling over hat placements and noise pollution. If you're wondering if I'm leaving anything else from this totally exciting episode, I'm not. Stop! I have had it with your flavor of the day! And your music! And your face! And your stupid fucking hat! <gasps> Turn off the music! Fix that hat! Here. It's Mugman trying to read a book, shipping himself with Calamaria, and getting distracted. I found the ice cream man to fit in the same mold as Bull Boy, another character within the show, but in a more forgettable fashion. His perceived evil route has been done to death in Disney shows alone. There's nothing new here. The adventure is weak, the jokes are lame, and it might be one of the most forgettable episodes despite not being rated the lowest. But speaking of meh episodes, Roadkill wasn't so much of an episode that had bad things in it, but just a lack of good, and an indifference towards seeing the devil portrayed this way. Look back to season 1 episodes like Roll the Dice, Sweater Off Dead, or Sweater Luck Next Time, or season 2 episodes like Release the Demons, where even though he ultimately loses at the end, his reputation doesn't really take a hit. He's still awesome in those episodes, but here, he's just seen as a normal guy when he's the devil. Plots like this, in theory, should be avoided like the plague with this character because it humanizes him way too much, especially for who he would go on to see is actually a big deal in the third season. So I says, you can take your nickel and you can stick it right here. If anything, Stickler is the most threatening person within the series from this point on, and he's not supposed to be a liked character, at least from both the devil's perspective and the audience perspective. He enforces the rules, he makes things hard for the devil, he's supposed to be lame and boring, yet he holds all the power? Not only this, but Cuphead and Mugman don't even fear the devil in this episode that much, beyond the brief moment where he intended physical harm. There's a few saving graces to this 11 minute pile of mid, which is the wholesomeness between the pet goat and Elder Kettle, but also I will admit, the devil's chaos replaced by cat noises was entertaining. I just wish it didn't require for him to be reduced to a pity party in order to do so for the fourth episode of the third season. The fourth episode of the second season was only marginally better. This is another episode that admittedly I've warmed up to slightly when I came back to re-binge the show, so consider this score higher than it would have been. I think what makes this episode work a little bit better may be a little bit of a cop-out. You see, within another episode, Handle With Care, we see Bull Boy a new character up to that point, and Mugman has a harsh reaction to him. I think he looks swell. Nobody asked you, bull boy. When we enter this episode, Cuphead and Mugman go their separate ways, not being able to amicably resolve their ideas of fun, Cuphead wanting to be more risky, Mugman wanting to be more safe, and enter Bull Boy in his proper debut, befriending Cuphead, which adds another layer as to why Mugman feels betrayed, disrespected, and lonely. It would be easy to forget that one moment between Mugman and Bull Boy, and it's not like they hint at it in this episode. I only put the two pieces together when binging it fully, so while it's a minor point, I only find this episode to be okay. I wanna learn from you, Cuphead, and be just like you, Cuphead, and become you, Cuphead. 
It feels like an episode any show could do. The idea of the duo splitting off in their own separate ways could have been built up to in a better way, and Mugman's side of things was incredibly boring. There wasn't much to it besides missing Cuphead and a tiny, tiny blinking you'll miss it moment where Mugman finds someone who wants to be safer than even he is. There wasn't many funny moments within this episode, and the resolution at the end was definitely a miss. Not the strongest of episodes, and especially coming off the prior episode, it was a letdown in comparison. But speaking of episodes that weren't the strongest, the season 2 finale upon rewatch was both empty and underwhelming, but served a greater purpose. Although I didn't use this aspect in my rating of the video, consciously anyway, one of the points of discussion with season 2 was that even though Cuphead was more impulsive, it was the build to season 3 in which it would be addressed. <laughs> Mugman? This was to excuse Say Cheese, Another Brother, Lost in the Woods, and this episode. Given that this was not addressed in Season 3, but that exact same selfishness would aid him, we can now lay this discussion to rest. Cuphead was, and is, supposed to be impulsive, and him humbling up shouldn't have happened beyond an episodic basis. However, when you write him to be this mean, you have to balance it with good comedy, a good balanced struggle, or at least a reason to act as so. Here, he's not as bad as other episodes, episodes, he's just berating Mugman here and there, but some of that can be excused due to being a meaner show. What makes this episode weak is that it really wasn't that funny outside of the ending with the devil. I didn't enjoy the devil wreaking havoc once he gathered the courage to prove everyone wrong that he's not washed up, but it led into him basically being humiliated, which was a bad omen for season 3. In addition, this episode felt kind of flat, as there wasn't much of a game-like feel to it, it just felt like Cuphead and Mugman running around without a point which isn't the worst thing ever, but it certainly shouldn't be ranked with the best episodes. You know what other episode was excused in season 2 because supposedly Cuphead was going to be humbled? Sweet Temptation, which is a weak episode. It's one of the rare episodes that I didn't find much of anything funny within it, and it sets up a prominent season 2 problem. Cuphead gets worse and worse with very little if any remorse, which the prior entry, The Devil's Pitchfork, was going to address alongside the season 3 premiere, which we'll speak about later. Although another bro set the tone, this episode was less funny in comparison. At least with another brother, there was a better story. Here, the only good part is seeing the Candy Kingdom and the candy-fied version of Cuphead and Mugman. I didn't enjoy the fact that Cuphead's poor impulse control never gets checked by Mugman without there being some life or death clause, especially because his way of repaying Mugman back for eating all of his candy took no effort on his end, and in fact contributed to even more of a struggle for Mugman because when you look at the entire episode, he was specifically told to not speak about the Candy Kingdom. He actually put Mugman in more danger trying to repay him back. Rule number one! Tell no one about Sugarland. If I told you there was a place where everything's made of candy, would you want to go there? Of course I'd want to. Wait, who's the Baroness? Hopefully we'll avoid her. I also found the Baroness a weird and weak character. I'm assuming she preys on children with poor impulse control to break her rules and then eat, which is a very convoluted way to make a villain. Between the clunky writing and the unlikable portrayal of Cuphead, I did feel like there was more of a game-like vibe in this episode compared to Another Brother, which is why this ranks slightly higher, but that can only get you so far. It has to be a great experience throughout this video game adaptation, and this episode was not. However, you will get a better experience once we leave the bottom 10 of Cuphead and get into better episodes, like Don't Answer the Door. Despite being a successor to Baby Bottle, this episode is only kind of better. It's not an awful episode, but compared to the rest of the show, it certainly doesn't stand out. It falls into the line of episodes where it limits how much it does to a simple adventure, which doesn't make it bad, just not spectacular. There's plenty of opportunity for fun and memorable moments in a simple story, as we'll see later on in this list, but that's not this episode. It's just a lot of watching and waiting for exciting things to happen, with a few dry spots scattered throughout. Uh, uh, no. 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 The 
the joke of Elder Kettle being pranked and pranking them back was kind of weak. The bear aspect was interesting, but I wished it was fleshed out more. And they didn't really need to extend the search for Baby Bottle that much if the whole point was that it wasn't Baby Bottle. It would have been super cool if the bear chased them back home, not to kill them, but to return to Basket like this episode does, and then everything else happens. At least in that sense, it would have a nice but chaotic way to ramp up things before the big twist. As it stands, there isn't much to speak about. It's a thin episode. There's more to speak about in episodes like Cup Stage. The plot of Cup Stage is simple. The trio of Cuphead, Mugman, and the Devil compete for the lead role in a play. There's this idea that a lot of people agree on, where if a show runs on for too long, it'll go through like a watering down period. Yeah, this plot is an example of this could have been done by anyone, and the way it turned out was not unique to the show at all. Replace these three characters, Cuphead, Mugman, and the Devil, with any other characters from any other show, and the episode would work exactly the same. So in addition to the cookie cutter plot and the way that they executed it, season 3 is saturated with the trend of taking away any threat from the devil and turning him into a complainer. I am tired of being unappreciated by you cultural numbskulls! I hope you all enjoyed yourselves because today's performance shall be my last. Now one may facetiously draw parallels to my complaining of the devil being a complainer with the devil complaining in universe. So to clear things up, if I had a pitchfork that shot fire, there's 126 different ways that I would get the lead role without being stopped by two kids. Admittedly, it is a funny episode compared to the rest of the season, but is blown out of the water by the prior two seasons jokes. I enjoyed seeing Cuphead and the devil duke it out for the main role, but Mugman was kind of there. It makes me feel like this episode episode was written to be a Cuphead slash Devil episode. It could have been more brash, in your face, and funny. So that's the bottom third of this show. Episodes that you can honestly avoid or just see once if you're truly curious. But now, we're getting into episodes that are good in their own right. Like an episode where Mugman wasn't just kind of there, he was the main focus. Piano Lesson was the light at the end of the tunnel of mediocre season 2 episodes. However, little did I know it would be the calm before the storm. This also falls in line with Cuphead being brash to the point of being a little hard to watch, but what saves this episode, unlike a few others in this season, is that the story works a lot better here. We have Mugman, whose dream is to play at the recital and make his mentor Ludwig proud. Do you remember all of those times we saw Mugman speak about his dream of playing the piano? I agree, I never did either. Unlike other season 2 episodes like Ice Cream Man, Ludwig is a good single episode character. Ludwig, I was wondering- A moment, Mugman! I must remove my driving gloves. You were saying? The overdramatic voice direction, the great character design, and his mannerisms really sold him on being a memorable part of an otherwise typical episode. Usually to keep these episodes fresh, the writing veers into having the rivalry take twists and turns, but this one was very straightforward. Cuphead doesn't care for piano, so of course he's unnaturally talented at the piano, only to take it from Mugman because... Lobsters? 10 grand? I get it, but at the same time, with the running joke about crawfish, it just seemed like Cuphead was perfectly content with what he had. Even during Roll the Dice, an episode about a show with an implied grand prize, Cuphead cared more about having fun than any material possession. Cuphead's stance in this episode appears kind of awkwardly forced into the episode, and that's one of the reasons it wouldn't be rated higher than it is. On the whole, it's a decent but flawed episode, marking the end of a hallway of boring or mean-spirited episodes, at least until around the end of Season 2. Season 3, however, would have an interesting obstacle. We've established an ongoing rivalry with Cuphead and the Devil, but also resolved the mystery of Miss Chalice, turning her from a mysterious cliffhanger into an entertaining mainstay. What would this season have to offer, and how will the Devil finally resolve his gripe with Cuphead? Well, so far, by being neutered as a threat. You think your brother's going to save you? <laughs> he thinks his brother's going to come down here and save him! <laughs> We've established very early on that the devil runs a tight ship and should be feared. And the prior episode to this, The Devil's Pitchfork, even had a critic acknowledge that he used to know what he was doing. Despite seeing imagery of these poor beings caged up and sent to perform manual labor, the devil seems to forget in this episode how to torture someone. He's unnaturally nice to Mugman, almost as if he doesn't have any options to torture the guy. Now, I love Mugman as a character, and this isn't a request to see him tortured, but why would the devil be so cautious 
and soft when it comes to dealing with Mugman, the person who made the invisible sweater, placed it on the devil, causing severe burns that took a long time to recover from, and laughed at him when he was at his lowest an episode ago. Why isn't Mugman carrying rocks? Why is he so sure that Cuphead will save him? Using the power of hindsight, it's because the devil grows soft. Even though when he isn't around Cuphead and Mugman, he can be himself. It's weird how neutered he'd become in this season, and it's only more obvious the more you watch. You know what weirdly worked out though? Dirt Nap. It was a decently good episode. It is a rare Elder Kettle-centric episode that revolves around him misunderstanding Cuphead and Mugman's woes and reluctant decision to bury someone to mean himself. If there's anything carrying this episode, it's the story. To see Elder Kettle attempt to impress Cuphead and Mugman shows how much he cares for him and the implied preservation of himself, but the story and pacing is slowed, albeit to the pace of Elder Kettle, and he offers not much beyond being the butt of a joke, which we've seen as early as the first episode of the series but Cuphead and Mugman play a laid-back role. Almost the same character story-wise, which isn't bad, but it would have been cool to get more one-liners from either of them. I did enjoy the small twist that the worm that they've been taking care of is alive, with the same voice actor of the worm playing Mugman. He's alive! Thanks a lot, Cuphead and Mugman. You really helped a worm out. So long, fellas! <laughs> Although it runs into the same problem of episodes like Baby Bottle and Handle with Care where it seems too casual of an episode to sack up against the more adventurous episodes of the series, plus the comedy was hit or miss. It hit sometimes, like with the entire sequence of Elder Kettle stepping over his own traps, but then miss in terms of the light bulb running gag in the beginning of the episode, but overall it was nice to see a bit of history and lore added to Elder Kettle that I did not know before watching this episode. If you want to see a season 1 episode that had a better gamey feel though, Though, you should check out Root Pact. It features the trio that one would see within the game rather early, which is a great inclusion into the first season, even if it is the seventh episode. Although not the funniest of episodes, the very first joke of Elder Kettle singing, turning abruptly into breaking his back, is still incredibly funny, and is one of the rare moments in this episode that I rewound and watched it again and again. Interestingly, like with another episode within the first season, Ghosts Ain't Real, an episode we'll see later, it features the trio dynamic of having one less competent character and the two that are in comparison except it's done better here because the less competent one isn't just for jokes but also contributes to the story in a major way this garden is all our poor elder cattle has left almost makes you want to cry that's just terrible poor elder cattle this episode, like with a few others in Season 1, has so much fun with the character design, even if it is for characters we may never see again. The bouncer was cool, probably one of the highlight characters, however beyond that, it was a very average episode in the grand scheme of the show. The adventure really wasn't that unique, and I think it could have went a lot farther and a lot wackier given if you know anything about the game, and anything about these characters. I found the ending to be underwhelming as well given that Elder Kettle's plans were built up to so much in this episode, unlike the moment with the radio within Baby Bottle where it breaks and it serves as a big moment as Elder Kettle learns about Baby, here it's just like swept away like the dried remains of the plant. It's not a bad episode by any means, but it definitely isn't an amazing episode either. In fact, as far as the story goes, it can learn a thing or two from this next episode. Season 2's return of Miss Chalice was also just good. Nothing extraordinarily spectacular, but it didn't really need to be. This episode had one purpose, get Miss Chalice and cut Cuphead and Mugman in the same room to continue from the high tensions of In Charm's Way, which was the last episode of season 1. With that being said, that's probably the best part of this episode, seeing them speak and demystifying Chalice's appeal down to being part charming but also part liar and still retain that wild card energy. Beyond that, the episode doesn't really offer that much excitement. It skips over the dancing competition that it was building up to a little bit, it doesn't explain how Chalice's dancing works versus when anyone else does it, and the angry mob angle was handled a tad underwhelmingly. While it served the greater purpose of showing Cuphead and Mugman that Miss Chalice is a ghost, there are other ways to go about that without having it feel undercooked. I didn't enjoy that when Miss Chalice explained her reasoning for abandoning them, it wasn't that big of a deal to them, showing that they don't hold grudges for that long. You two knocked yourselves out, cops stormed in, and I was lucky to get away. Cookies are pretty good though, huh? 
she's got us there. Well, I don't like cookies. The Gulp finally had a solid joke appearance within this episode, and it won't be his last either. Overall, I just felt like this episode was the embodiment of this is by no means bad, but this is by no means amazing. An episode that has an amazing appearance from a character you wouldn't have predicted is Special Delivery. There's a lot I appreciate about this episode. We see the best trio of Cuphead, Mugman, and Miss Chalice, who doesn't overstep anyone's spotlight and equally shines throughout this episode. We have the best Pork Rind appearance within the show, with him trying to be largely apathetic but being shown to at least have some feelings, albeit mostly guilt towards the trio, who admittedly annoy him, but he doesn't want to see anything bad happen to them. We see Ribby and Croaks again, always a welcome when it comes to the show, and their establishment, which was rebuilt rather quickly, these guys work. And if you don't know what happened to the establishment, stay tuned, because that episode is a riot. The key to this episode is that through needing to deliver a package, each of them react to it differently. Cuphead wants to take it seriously, get the job done so that they can get their ball back. Mitch Chalice wants to see what's in the package. Mugman, the best of them all, takes his secret disguise seriously, which leads to a lot of wacky shenanigans. <laughs> This is a highlight in an otherwise just fine season 3. A highlight of season 2 would be the premiere episode. The second season had a lot of expectations on it, but the sole question people wanted answered was what happened to Cuphead and Mugman, which I did not know I'd need to appreciate so much given how in another show, Oddballs, that also ended with a cliffhanger, wouldn't address it for 7 episodes. The episode directly deals with the ramifications of getting caught sneaking into a cookie factory, combining it with the sibling rivalry element that the two shared all throughout the first season into a fun plot, seeing the two brothers scramble around and try to escape. Mugman also has a side part of the plot, where he tries to make the best of his situation. Working as a laundry person, befriending all the mean, tough, scary prisoners, which like with the salty sponge, I really like that trope. I think it's one that works best when used sparingly. Oh, don't worry. Someone else will wash your blankie. <laughs> as much as I love prison, my place is with Cuphead. <laughs> The comedy was pretty good, nothing to write home about. It was a good way to start the season, but it was just nothing special. It would have been fun to see a few different ways to spice this up. Like for one, we hear at the end that Elder Kettle meets up with Miss Chalice. I wouldn't have mind if it sacrificed some elements from the first part of this episode to see more of that. I would have loved to see a more elaborate sequence when Cuphead breaks out. I would have loved if this episode tapped into the misunderstood fear of Miss Cyclops more, the biggest prisoner of them all. However, as it stands, it's a solid introduction to an actual action-packed second season that features cool episodes, like Dead Broke. Similar to the first season, there was an episode called Ghosts Ain't Real, an episode I've been building up because that episode is really good. Like with this episode, both of them are just spookier than the rest of their respective season. And I always considered this episode and that episode to be like the Halloween-esque episodes of the show, and between the two, this one is just a weaker one. It's still good, which speaks to how great the other episode is. Here we get some cool aspects, like the burn bomb quadruplets, for ghosts who long for an immortal world after being trapped for a hundred years within a painting. They're crazy, chaotic, and I love their voice direction as well. There's a lot of great voices to be heard within season two. This is also a heavy Miss Chalice episode, which is sorely needed after Charmed and Dangerous? What kind of word is dangerous? This is also a heavy Miss Chalice episode, which is sorely needed after Charmed and Dangerous, and the season one finale in Charm's Way. We see that Miss Chalice is now casual with Cuphead and Mugman now that the friction has been settled, and their dynamic can truly shine. Even though Miss Chalice also loves Risk, has a bit of an ego, and takes challenges on, she doesn't overshadow Cuphead. In fact, I'd even argue that Cuphead kind of becomes a different person, a tad safer compared to Chalice, and that's really cool to see. <laughs> We see the return of the ice cream man, the woman who practically lives in the theater, Sally's stage play, and some cool action sequences towards the end. This felt a lot more gamey than many episodes within season 2 and I appreciate that. This next episode didn't feel gamey at all but was one of the best stories within season 1. When it comes to the smaller adventures, Handle with Care may be one of the best despite its low score. While not specifically tailored towards a gamey feel, it is tailored towards cup heads, pun intended, which explains its anatomy, how handles are 
viewed in the world and was Elder Kettle's best performance to date, even with this fictitious story. Cuphead and Mugman are always going to fight, and to see it go wrong in different ways is the bread and butter of the show. We also got a proper introduction to Pork Ryan as within the first episode, they never fully visit his shop, getting distracted by the carnival, more on that episode later, but also a small appearance from Bull Boy, who we saw in Another Brother. The story just made a lot of sense, never had any slow parts, and even had a twist at the end. <laughs> Get a load of these bad handles. I found the honey joke to be hilarious even months later, and the bride joke was pretty funny too. The only aspect that holds this episode back is that it takes two steps back from being a gamey sort of vibe for a more conventional show vibe, which isn't inherently bad, but it isn't what I'm looking for in this show. And it isn't displaying the show's strong suit to both me as a new fan, but also longtime fans of the show. This next episode also had a fantastic story, but took a step closer to getting that game-like feel right, even if it is still a little flawed. The rags to riches story story of King Dice, post Roll the Dice, had an incredible amount of potential, even before I watched it. Down and Out is a King Dice episode that just so happens to feature Cuphead and Mugman. From seeing him live in squalor conditions, eating a cooked boot, and having trash dropped on him unapologetically, to seeing him gain his confidence back after one show which brings in everyone nearby was nothing short of engaging from beginning to end. It's one of the best stories within the show, and obviously one of two fantastic stories within the third season. Season. We'll get to the other one later. This is also accentuated with the boredom of the devil. So far within this season, he's been pushed around and not taken seriously. Not just by Cuphead and Mugman, but by his own minions, minus henchmen, but more specifically Stickler. He finally cracks, calling the place that he used to have fun extremely boring, and refusing to take accountability for his lack of soul snatching. This place used to have style. What happened to the glitz, the pizzazz, the razzle dazzle? Hmm? Hmm? So with him needing entertainment and King Dice working his way back up to the top, not only did it have a wholesome ending, but the story didn't make a complete circle back to where he was at Roll the Dice. This is a new King Dice, on a new path. Although not rated as highly as other episodes, this is only held back by its conventional feel, so while it's a great, great story, it wouldn't rank higher than the episodes that have the gamey feel for me. An episode that did truly knock the gamey feel out of the park is Ribby and Croaks. Ribby and Croaks was a really good episode that had the memorable debut of the frog duo, Ribby and Croaks, but also established a lot of smaller things. For one, this episode has Cuphead and Mugman at their signature competitive and tense atmosphere that defines them as the troublesome brothers that we know and love. We also got to see smaller but recurring characters, a unique but memorable environment, and a wholesome song about Ribby and Croak appreciating their mob. This was the first episode I felt directly translated the fun, chaotic, wacky feel perfectly into episodic form. Ah, fire's on fire! You say it's my fault? So what if I am? This felt straight out of a level within a game compared to Baby Bottle, the episode before this one, where that felt more like a conventional cartoon episode. So what makes this good and not great? While the adventure aspects and the game feel are the better qualities of the episode, it's held back by the actual story, which is that Cuphead and Mugman don't get along because someone ate the other person's food. It just felt a little out of place within this episode, including the moment where they both apologize to each other. I'm assuming it's supposed to be a funny moment created from the contrast of chaos around them with them being emotional. And I do see the connections between their sibling rivalry and Ribby and Croaks' rivalry, so it's definitely not a bad story, but one that needed more to glue the connection together. The comedy wasn't terrible, it was just done better in other episodes. However, I will highlight the joke with the cook and his girlfriend being one of the best moments within the show, tied with the table aspect of the chase scene. It just looks beautiful and deserves more credit. Like the debut episode, Carnival doesn't get enough credit for being a great introduction to the show for both fans and newcomers. Cuphead and Mugman's personalities are clearly distinct. There's a lot of fun, adventure, and great music. The story also sets up a clear overarching plot with Cuphead owing his soul to the devil. Through my experience of watching pilot episodes, they're either unpolished, not focused enough, or sometimes even too excited to tell you all about the story that it feels cluttered. Admittedly, the weakest point is the comedy, but there's a few defenses to this one. For one, it's still a relatively funny episode, just not to the level of the rest of the show. But more importantly, the episode told more story for the purpose of setting up fun moments later. Hey boss! What? 
I was singing! The red, the soul counter stopped. What the? It's like how with Help Wanted, for example, maybe that episode isn't in anyone's top 10 when it comes to Spongebob, but it had to tell the story of so much for every other episode to make sense. The chase scene with the devil is quite possibly one of my favorite chase scenes within the show. It does feel like it could be directly translated from a video game level or to one and not lose any of its charm. Speaking of, the introduction to the devil showcases charm, singing ability, and aggression in a perfect way. I'm curious to know how Mugman would have known that destroying the soul ball machine would have saved the two of them because that's a long shot for a hunk of metal he's only seen for about 10 minutes. The running gag with Elder Kettle is great. The hard cut when Mugman tells Cuphead that they're not going to the carnival only to go was also great. And also seeing the soulless people of Inkwell Isles was a great introduction to tell who is and not with the soul. So that's the middle third of this show, full of good episodes in their own right, but this upper third is where the show truly shines. Compared to the actual holiday Holiday special, this is the better winter themed, Christmas themed episode. Despite having a simple premise of gathering a tree, it turns into a fantastic adventure. It's episodes like this that really show exactly what I mean with having a grand adventure even if the concept is simple and casual. Plus the action heavy segments feel directly ripped from a game, having these twists and turns and variants all around. I enjoyed the dynamic of Cuphead and Mugman a ton in this episode, and their chemistry was the driving factor all throughout. What do you say? Hey, pork rind. Let's close it up at five. Ten. <laughs> okay, okay. Six. Tell you what. Here's my final offer. Fifteen. Fifteen? What happened to ten? Pork rind was also cool, being a tough negotiator and setting things off for Cuphead and Mugman to solve the problem as chaotically as they usually do. Usually this aspect goes without saying because it can apply to every episode on this list, even the bad episodes, but I want to give a special amount of praise to the animation within this episode. The team appears to have gone all out, making it feel bouncy and full of life, envying a lot of shows that premiered episodes as well in that year. While it may not be the funniest episode of the show, it definitely is in the upper bound of episodes when it comes to quality. You know what was one of the funniest episodes, however? If there was an episode within the show that was straight jokes, it was the episode Rats All Folks. This feels like a love letter to Tom and Jerry with a war slant, which most likely is a nod to Elder Kettle's past. Although the story is pretty much what you get, the true appeal of this episode is that you get to see Cuphead, Mugman, and later Elder Kettle deal with one of the most sinister villains within the show, Werner Vermin, a rat whose mission is to take over the cottage for his own. There was slapstick overflowing in this episode like no other. Just going through a few of my favorites, there's Mugman dressing up as a cheese lady because for some reason they thought that would work. There's a gag where Vermin would hide in the other brother's cup so that they would beat each other up, a classic. But one of my favorites would include the mouse traps and seeing Werner tease them by eating their do something nice for Elder Kettle so he will do something nice for us back cake. I think I will give it a lick. <laughs> I could tell the team had a lot of fun storyboarding this episode because there's a lot of creative ways that they retell some of the classic gags that Tom and Jerry were perfecting decades ago. Also, to see Elder Kettle save the day for once is a refreshing take on an otherwise Elder Kettle light season. If there were anything I would have wanted to see more of, it's probably to have Elder Kettle come back into the fray earlier, as it's not about the cake, it's about the takeover of his home. It makes me wonder if Elder Kettle and Vermin would have been enemies back in the day, which would have been cool to know. Maybe Vermin is a part of a faction that Elder Kettle used to battle in the war, or maybe he was sent on behalf of someone bigger and badder than him. However, as it stands, it's a very good episode, however not good enough to be in the top 10, like Ghost Ain't Real, which is an underrated episode of the show, especially when I think about what a perfect episode of Cuphead theoretically would have to have. This episode accomplishes the adventure and game aspects really well, especially for being an episode that doesn't really fit in with the rest of the episodes perfectly. In fact, I'd argue it sticks out, and not in a good way, despite ultimately being a great episode. This episode keeps the supernatural aspect of the show alive and has a big elaborate chase scene with the ghost that felt action-packed with a big twist at the end. Now 
Now do you believe in... Oh! However, centering in on the ghosts, while this trio could have easily have been a duo, and a lot of this episode wouldn't need to be changed, the designs were fun. I can tell the art team had a blast with this episode, especially when we get around to the different animated segments that increase the charm of this episode. it back is that the comedy was just there. It was a lot more action than comedy, which again isn't a bad thing in a vacuum. Wacky shenanigans technically count as slapstick, but it just wasn't funny to me. Obviously, this episode more than makes up for it by having such a grand adventure for what is a run-of-the-mill concept. A grander adventure was the series finale. The Devil and Miss Chalice aged better than I remember. Although it suffers like a few other episodes in this season from having the devil too soft, this is one of the lesser offenses. This story would have been a 5 out of 5, but the ending was incredibly unsatisfying that a point had to have been docked off for that. That's enough! Just one more! It's over! He won! You lost! That's it! We're done! But nope! Oh, come on! Boss, we should go. Oh... There is just too much in seeing the devil sad this season that even though I knew he wasn't going to win, to have him appear this much in the dumps at the end just took me out of the immersion. Plus, the episode really wasn't that funny and some jokes fell flat, but it was clear that this episode wanted to be more serious and ambitious, which now, that the negatives are out of the way, we can speak about. The dance sequence obviously was the best aspect about the show. We start the episode off with the devil and this chalice having a friendly but competitive vibe with each other about who to better dancer is, so to have the competition for her life be centered around dancing was a no-brainer. However, there is one aspect that has confused me even to this day, so there is an applause meter that measures who gets the bigger applause. Miss Chalice maxes out the meter, yet when she trips at the end, she loses, even though the devil didn't get as much applause. I wish it was a bit clearer. You would have won if I hadn't given you those marbles! What? You lost because of him? Ah. Uh. Delicious! Outside of that small element, I love the solidified bond that Chalice has for the two dingbats and risking her life to keep them safe. However, I also appreciate Cuphead, even empty headedly putting his life on the line, and also Mugbants, to save Chalice as well. The way the ending wrapped around to the beginning was meh, because again, episodes like the worst that season 2 had to offer accentuated that impulsive nature and left a bad taste in my mouth. It was cool to see Chalice become less of a wild card throughout the season, a character who had the opposite arc was Mugman, who became so dangerous that he had one of the best episodes of the show. Dangerous Mugman will always be a slept on favorite for me for a variety of reasons. For one, this is a Mugman centric episode, which is rare within the show. This episode also swaps the dynamics of Cuphead and Mugman, which was both memorable and refreshing to see. It also has a really great story about confidence that isn't told in a cheesy way, combined with the fantastic adventure led by Mugman. He sails the sea, travels the jungle, and climbs the volcano all off the assumption that Cuphead's goggles give confidence. Goggles that would be separated from Mugman long before he would realize. These goggles give me a sense of adventure you can't possibly comprehend. Even though it is a story with the smallest amount of characters, just Cuphead, Mugman, and Porkrine, each play their part really well. When it comes to Porkrine, the clever misdirection of him going ape on Cuphead and Mugman, reaching the boiling point of being annoyed by them was the most memorable joke of this episode to me. And while I'm older and wouldn't have believed that he would have done something like this, just the mere fact that this show would tease this is what makes it funny to me. <laughs> However, the best part is Mugman and his bravado, which is a much needed changeup, even if it is just for this episode, as his character has been mostly reactive to Cuphead, so to see him shine was very much appreciated in this season, like with the two-parter special. As part two to Sweater Off Dead, this episode does some things better and some things worse than its prior episode, as this is part two of the two-parter, but ultimately both are on even playing fields. While Sweater Off Dead had a grander sense of adventure to it, while also retaining some of the lore elements 
elements a lot better, sweater luck next time felt smaller, and it did not live up to that same grand aspect, instead opting for a more casual feel to it, which in some ways aided its comedy and story a lot better. The jokes in sweater luck next time were great, but to highlight the very best, the one scene where Cuphead and Mugman scold the devil for being so loud that he'll potentially wake up Elder Kettle was top tier comedy. Hand it over! Oh! Would you get out of here? Elder Kettle can't see you! Who is Elder Kettle? especially because it didn't take away from the power and menace that the devil has, while giving Cuphead and Mugman a perceived dog in the fight. They still look and act as if they can defeat the devil, making it a balanced matchup. The dynamic here between Cuphead and the devil is one of my favorite moments within season one. <laughs> ah, how delightfully unexpected. Uh, you know, Cuphead, you're not so bad after all. It's kind of wholesome to see their abrasive and egotistical personalities be able to both clash, but complement each other as well, which adds a layer to their rivalry. It makes the capture of this sweater have more depth than a simple grab and dash. However, there was a lot of that as well, albeit failed attempts, but it showed the sheer determination of the devil. Even small aspects of this story, like henchmen's inclusion and the radio, were all important aspects of the story, making it one of the more cohesive and gripping stories the show has to offer, maybe even the best within the season. Alongside part one. Sweater Off Dead is an extremely important episode within Cuphead, and it is equally good to know that the show did not fumble the devil's arc. Yet, this episode was all about tension from both sides of the camp, with the protagonist Mugman really stepping up to emphasize to Cuphead and the audience how bad it is that Cuphead's soul is being sought after by the devil actively. With the antagonist, we are introduced to an important character within the lore. Stickler, the true reason a devil has to care about Cuphead's soul, despite the other aspects of his operations breaking records and performing fantastically. <laughs> Don't stop the party. I'll only be a minute. Nice work, Stickler. I will not apologize for doing my job. Both sides are pushed to confront each other for logical reasons, which makes the tension that much better because a resolution is needed and needed quickly. We're introduced to the invisible sweater, which deters the devil in this two-parter episode, and introduces a lot of schemes, action, and the angriest we've seen the devil by far, which by the way, I really enjoyed the animation in this episode. I also enjoyed the introduction of Quadratus, who's voice performance and character direction was distinct within this episode and the show, giving him a unique edge compared to other side character debuts in the show, only tied against King Dice debatably within season one. A sweater knit with invisible fur from a long extinct creature will deter. Basically, the sweater is impenetrable to the devil, so... Uh, you stopped rhyming. Eh, it gets old. There was a lot of good comedy within this episode, and across the board, it is one of the better episodes in the season. But not as good as the season finale. This was the episode that taught me that this show was one to keep an eye on. Between the introduction of the charming and dancing wildcard Miss Chalice, the amazing musical element brought to this episode, or the way that it ended and how it left a lot of questions to be answered within season 2. There's a lot to dive into here. However, not to rehash the video I made on it, let's go over the major points. The Elder Kettle angle at the beginning was quick and didn't stay as long as it needed to, to give Miss Chalice all of the space to debut in an impactful way. To see the boys stop everything just to observe her persuasion tactics and even at the end of the episode still not be able to replicate it only builds up Miss Chalice's character to be seen as magical. get a peek into her life, it's incredibly engaging and fascinating to watch as a fly on the wall. But it isn't until Miss Chalice, Cuphead, and Mugman combine their fun towards the latter half that really pulls this episode together. The Cookie Factory scenes were super tense, as we see that Miss Chalice didn't want to leave them, but couldn't get tangled with the police for reasons that we'd begin to understand later. Cuphead and Mugman are also thrown in jail, and it sets up a fantastic season 2 that would answer all of these problems and keep interest high, both for the show and the then upcoming DLC. <laughs> 
To say it's a perfect episode may be a little bit of an embellishment, but as far as courting attention, this is one of the best episodes of the series to do so. However, it is not the best ranked Chalice episode. That goes to Dance with Danger. What an amazing episode that I knew I had to speak about when it came out. It has one of the best stories and best adventures within the show, while also explaining Miss Chalice's origin in an incredibly entertaining way. I love the Penguin caretakers. I love the fact that dancing was just in her blood when she was young. I love that she instinctively took up charming people out of things that she needed for survival reasons. There's so much here that makes it one of my favorite episodes. Do you think you're doing? We don't spend that much time with the devil, as the episode maximizes its time to focus on Chalice's origin. We see exactly how she's able to be both mortal and not, as she's made a deal with the devil, but has not repaid her side of the deal yet. Given that we've seen Miss Chalice and Cuphead and Mugman bond over numerous episodes, having the devil order Chalice to betray the two first friends that she's ever had is a hard decision to make compared to her own life. It's time to cash in on that favor you owe me. Sure, what do you need? I need you to betray the Ding Dong. Mind you, she didn't want to be tangled up with the cops when they met in Charm's way, and now she has to weigh her own life against the bond she has with the cup duo. It's a different vibe for an episode, but still retains a lot of lore elements and a great adventure and story. I also think it's the best episode that season 3 has to offer. However, this next episode was the one that made me commit to speaking about Cuphead the most within 2022. Roll the Dice is one of the defining episodes of Cuphead, and I think it was specifically written to be. From the concepts alone, exploring King Dice, one of the more memorable characters from the game, and seeing Cuphead take over his show, which is the number one game show on Inkwell Isles, was such a great concept with a perfect execution. Who's the host with the most? Mm -hmm. You are your handsome devil. Mwah. Oh, you're terrible. I love that they just fall into it too, as the episode also emphasizes that the devil is still looking for Cuphead's soul. We establish that King Dice may appear invincible to the audience, but he is a mere pawn to the devil, losing all of that charm whenever he has to speak to him, which only accentuates the power and influence in the series' main antagonist. Speaking of charm, King Dice could not have had a better debut into this show. A great musical number, charm, elegance, ego, and aggression, all wrapped up in a package that only makes his antagonistic role all the more memorable. His dynamic with Cuphead was funny, but also served as a role both in this episode, but also in the grand scheme, planting the seeds of King Dice's fall from grace, and giving him a reason to dislike Cuphead outside of association. You're going in that room, one way or another. The card band was a great touch to the comedy and also the character design. Elder Kettle raging in the background was also a highlight and seeing Telephone again was just funny. There's only some points docked because compared to other episodes, it's not the best adventure but compared to most episodes, this is one of the funniest, it has the best game feel that the series has to offer and that's why it's one of the best. However, if you want to see the best devil centric episode, look no further. Release the Demons is a crazy episode that fulfills nearly everything I would have wanted in a Cuphead episode. This may even be the devil's greatest episode in terms of performance. His raw anger towards Cuphead was believable, impactful, yet also hilarious, creating some of the funniest jokes within the series. His rallying of the troops was funnier each time he failed in doing so. King Dice was also amazing in this episode, showing some versatility and keeping the story flowing even if he wasn't the main focus. Big D, Big D, it is a pleasure to watch you in action. Nobody works a room like you. <laughs> Are you still here? You mean number one's got to do it too? Cuphead and Mugman's contributions, while smaller, still mattered a lot in this episode. The story of Mugman trying to scare Cuphead based on a Hayfair trip they had years ago is just a cool idea. However, there's something this episode did that I'm highly appreciative of. The devil calls for the four horsemen, and Henchman builds this up as a drastic choice. Normally, in shows today, it's subverted, and the scary monsters look cute and cuddly but are so dangerous. That's not what this episode did.
There was so much chaos within this episode that I cannot even contain it to a small summary of why it's ranked so high, so I'm gonna leave it at this. It's one of the funniest, action-packed, and well-paced episodes of the show. It's important to the show's lore, has some of the coolest character designs, and is insanely rewatchable. However, even this episode doesn't compare to the greatest adventure within the show, which gives number one its edge over this episode. Which you can find out on Patreon. I'm kidding, kidding, kidding. But could you imagine? By the way, uploading scrapped but complete videos to Patreon that anyone who supports can see, so check it out, like the best episode of Cuphead. It feels like cheating to give the longest episode the title of the best, but it goes deeper than being the best episode. It is everything I could have imagined I'd want in an episode of Cuphead. It might be a little bit of a hot take, but if this show was just 8 to 10 of these, I would be just as happy, if not more, within the show. With its extended runtime, it offers the best adventure, a high C adventure and goes about it in a way that's full of action, comedy, romance, lore, twists and turns, and amazing music, and even amazing background direction. Who dares go away on the ship of Captain Briny Beard? Yay! A real, real pirate! You can take us on a high seas adventure! Adventure? We're going home! No way! High seas adventure! Briny Beard is just a great character, a hardened pirate whose time at sea taught him that he's too lonely to brave it alone, I guess if you don't count his parrot. He seeks out the most dangerous beast of the seven seas, Calamaria. I present to ye a token of me love, a symbol of me enduring devotion, me undying affection. You talk too much. The deepest... <laughs> She's one of my favorite characters in the show. I love her voice, her design, and her personality. She's basically a career woman, and that clash between her and Briny Beard was engaging. I love Briny Beard's parrot chiming in here and there, and also being included in his song. I love the fact that Cuphead and Mugman swap their interests in a high seas adventure, the former wanting it in the first half, and the latter wanting it in the second half when Briny Beard gets to shore. Them breaking Briny Beard's legs was shocking, especially because it comes full circle. This is an episode that both entertains someone who's completely new to the lore and enhances their experience if they did play the game. It's episodes like this that, in an ideal world, I would want from the show because it has a chaotic and fast pace to it while still telling a fun, memorable story that feels pulled right out of the video game. Everyone in this episode did their part perfectly. Let me know which show I should rank from worst to best next and check out this Cuphead video here by tapping on the screen.